G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, it's a wintry day in Adelaide and not very nice outside. And I had a bit of a disaster. The handle, the handle fell off my beloved frying pan, the one I, that gets used all the time. It's a family heirloom, this thing. <laughs> it's cheap, but it's a good one because it's not coated. I hate those ones that are coated because that coating always falls off and you finish up eating the stuff. And uh, anyway, the handle fell off. Well, I actually broke. Well, it was all cracked through, you can see. And when I tried to take it off, I finished up, snapped off where the handle went on. So I thought, oh, I'll go and buy a new, sort, a new frying pan, get one like this again, because I really like this, and it's got a lid, you know. Do you think I could buy one like this, you know? They're either really sort of curved in, or they're all, they're all like little woks, and they're coated with this crap they put on them. So I thought, oh, you know, I didn't really care how much it cost, I was going to buy one, I had it all around, so I thought, oh, stuff it. I reckon I can fix this up. So what I've done is, where she's thin, where it broke off, it's still okay on the inside. Although I'll get the old Chinese lathe going and the home cast aluminium, so I've machined up an adapter to bring it go on here. So there's a stainless steel bolt there. I bought a stainless steel bolt. And, uh, and of course, you know, it's just a matter of have something to put to pull up against so it gives it some strength. So I made up this out of some home cast. And I wasn't going to video this, I thought, oh, you know, this is Mickey Mouse. But I thought, oh, what the hell, you might be interested. So the plan is that the, new, the handle, the wooden handle will go on here and it will screw on um, using this thread on the bolt and it will screw up inside of that so it will come out sort of, it will just sort of go over the edge of the aluminium to give it some support around the edge and then the thread in the middle will hold the whole thing together so it just screws on. And the handle I'm going to use is a good old rake handle. I mean I could have a humongous hand <laughs> humongous handle. I could stand back from the frying pan about oh, see it, five feet I reckon. But no I'm going to cut the, cut the mother off. Cut off about that much. And then basically I've just got to drill and tap a thread into it of that size and, uh, and then turn the turn the end in a bit you know sort of machine a bit off so I'm going to be doing some wood turning on my Chinese lathe I've never done wood turning on a lathe before ah oh, way back I did some yeah way back so anyway I'll show you what I'm working with you might find it interesting right well here's the Chinese lathe and here's some home cast aluminium in here and uh, You've, not, you've never seen this chucking one before. This is a monster. Well, from, the, from my lathe, it's a six inch, the same as the, the old four jaw I've got, but it's, it's quite deep, and with the big backing plate on it, it comes out a fair way. What I like about it, it's got a, a really big throat in it, so this stuff here, which is about, I don't know, 35 mil at least, went into it no problem, and the throat is big all the way right back to this, in, uh, backing plate here, so it goes right through this backing plate onto the spindle plate. Just shows you, I picked this up at a flea market for 25 bucks. It's uh, Pratt, Burnett, uh, Pratt Bernard. Uh, no outside jaws, no chuck key, but it's just a standard chuck key. And you would have seen in one of the other videos where I uh, threw the jaws up because they were a bit out. And uh, yeah, there's a video, if you go back. She's had a rough life, look, someone's had it in a great big chuck, so it's been on an even bigger lathe, you know, a, this chuck in a huge chuck. Things people do, but, oh, well, a few marks doesn't matter. It works good. Anyway, yeah, I thought I'd show you that, because you wouldn't have seen that. What else? Before I get on and try my hand at wood turning again. Well, we use this chuck when we do it, uh, because I can get the broom handle in a long way, because it's... The broom handle is just a bit bigger than an inch, so it won't go through the spindle, even though my spindle is an inch, um, 28 mil, 27 mil. So, all right, we'll uh, we'll get set up and I'll, I'll do some wood turning. Oh yeah, I'm also partway through another project, which is turning out pretty good, I think. 
and I've taken the four jaw chuck off and uh, left the work in it. This is a beautiful old foot. Well, it's a, not old. It's well, it's as old as the lay. This it's a uh, Chinese four jaw. Excellent. It's um, what's the brand? Oh, I forget, but it's um, it's a good one. So I've just left the work in here, and then I can just put it back on and index back exactly where it was. But I'm waiting for a a big rare earth magnet to come across from China to finish this job. It's a slow. They're as slow as hell posting the stuff. So I thought, oh well, I'll get on, and then the frying pan shit itself. So I thought, oh well, I'll get on and do the frying pan. And you see here, I've padded the jaws with bits of uh, angle iron. You can pattern with all sorts of stuff, but this works quite well. And uh, yeah, so you can use tape, angle iron, cut down into strips or strips of coppers, brass, aluminium, you name it, anything will work, you know, it just protects the job. All right, let's get on with the woodwork side of things. Right, well, I'll just cut it off a bit longer than the original one. So that's sort of where the Flange will, uh, flange will be there, so just a tiny bit longer. That's plenty, I think. All right, we'll cut that off. Right, now yeah, we're cooking, almost cooking. Right, well, I don't want to mark this this wood, so I'll use the old emery tape trick on it again. And uh, just, I mean, there won't be a lot of pressure doing this job. And I think I'll machine it back with a parting off blade, which I use to cut the aluminium with, so that will act like a wood chisel, you know, a little one. And uh, yeah, we'll go that way. So, first thing is to mount this in here. So, here we oh. What have we got? Set the light on. How's that? A bit easy to see. All right, let's set the carriage stop. This is where carriage. I like carriage stops better than chasing the numbers on digital scales. It's a positive stop and you always come back to the exact same spot every time you can't make an error. It's the way to go. do get a collet set by one of these wrenches they're a lot better than the little single point wrenches that come with them they can't slip and you can do stuff up a lot tighter than the little single point ones can do ah, I mean I used a single point for a long time before I got this but these are these are worth the money for sure they're not very expensive Bloody drill. Ah. Yes. The grain is dragged at one way, you know, too bloody bad. It's banging in hard and it's Than I expected. Stick shit, it'll go in. 
slight change of plan. I've got to recess in this a uh, little bit because the nut is standing proud because I've put a spring washer under it, which I wasn't going to do originally. So I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just recess this a bit. Well, I had to do another one, mark one version, the whole ran off line too much. I did mark two, and this one turned out perfectly. So I've got like, plenty of broom handle, so we have this little problem. So it screws on, I think. Oh, it will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Put on for now. Might use some glue on it. Some uh, got some quick grip. That's, that's heat resistant. Oh, this isn't going on too bad. Uh, are you the man or are you the man? Have a look at that, eh? Awesomeness. I mean, that, that frying pan's never, never been better in its whole life. Look at that. So I set a shell out, I don't know, 30 bucks for a new frying pan. This cost me $2 for the couple of these bolts and a nut. And 8 bucks for a broom handle. 6 bucks for a broom handle. Uh, hoe handle, six bucks for a hoe handle. There you go, once again, a little old Chinese laid proved it's worth. That'd be the bee's knees. Well, that's it. It turned out pretty good, I think. I mean, that's just a nice grip. It's got the collar here to keep the handle away from the flame from the gas heater, the gas uh, stove. And it's actually better handled than the original one, which is, you know, pretty ordinary. So. Yeah, you know, I've got plenty of broom handles, so, but it, uh, if it fails, I can easily do another one, but it's, it's really on tight, I actually won't use any glue, it doesn't need it, that's, that's pulled up great, so, yeah, pretty cool, alright, that's it for me, bit of trivia, see you next time, cheers.